Okay, so I said I was going to do a quick review on how to read a Mac uh, file system. Uh, I'm, I'm using a, an old Mac Pro hard drive I've got, and I want to take a few files off of it and transfer them to my Windows drive. So I've got it hooked up with my uh, little USB adapter. Um, don't have it turned on just yet, but I will in a second. And I just want to show you a couple of things first. Um, there are nicer ways to do this. And if you were going to install the drive permanently in your machine, you're going to use it every day or quite often, you're going to transfer files between it and a Windows drive or take the drive from work or something and, and plug it in every day, you're better off purchasing something like Mac Drive. Um, I used Mac Drive 9 quite a while ago when I had a Mac um, and it's pretty slick. Um, it'll cost you some money but basically you'd end up with the drive sitting right here as a normal device. It gets mounted for you every time you boot the system. Um, just and it's seamless like you wouldn't know the difference between you having a Mac drive and you having a Windows drive it just it deals with all that stuff for you um, so that'd be my recommendation for a permanent solution where you're going to transfer files regularly however I don't do that much anymore I just want to get a couple of files off this drive so I'm going to use this tool here HFS Explorer um, you can see it's uh, obviously freeware it's just a uh, a pretty simple little product. Um, you just Google HFS Explorer or there's the website if you want to pause and note it down. Really small little program. Here's what it looks like um, just started. Um, by the way, if you have any problems with it, you have to start it in administrator mode. Um, it'll usually prompt you for that, but just, just to let you know. So, um, I want to show, I, I don't know if most people know what the problem is here, but uh, if you're a Mac user, you don't have this problem <laughs> because uh, Mac, I guess because it's a, a Unix-based system, has always had the ability to mount other file systems. So if you're in Mac OS and you hook up a Windows drive, it's never been a problem. Well, I, should, I shouldn't say never, but it, for as long as I can remember, it hasn't been a problem, as long as Mac's been a Unix-based system anyway, so for a good 10 plus years. But Windows um, is not Unix based, but it's for whatever reason they just have not supported it natively. You've always had to get some kind of third party uh, utility. Yeah, you, you know, you could even use a, a Unix uh, like um, command line tool that I've seen before, um, but it's always been a bit of a pain. Um, so and again, just so I can show people what the problem is, if, you, if you're not aware, I'm going to turn on the drive that I've got plugged into my USB adapter. And you'll hear Windows again kind of uh, let me know that it's on, hopefully soon. And it should appear here. There we go. So this is the disk management um, control panel for those who haven't used it. Um, and not trying to tell you what to do here, but but be really careful in this program, especially if you're logged in as an administrator like I am. Um, this is where you can nuke partitions, re reallocate space, etc. Um, you can basically ruin your drive here, <laughs> more or less. So any data you wanted to get, you can quickly remove. It's going to warn you, of course. It's not going to just let you remove a partition without asking if you're sure, but pretty quickly you can nuke a drive in a second you know this isn't uh, formatting this is partitioning so uh, it's it'll happen very quickly if you're not careful so make sure you know what you're doing here um, but you can see that the original disk which is Windows is showing is this disk C the disk management tool sees that it's a Windows drive it knows what kind of file system it is see how it's NTFS so it knows what kind of file system it is and there's some other partitions on it as well. Here's the uh, Mac drive I just connected by USB. And you can see that when the Windows 
disk manager knows that it's there. It sees that there's something with some partitions. It doesn't know what the partitions are. It doesn't have a clue what the file system is, right? So, and you can see that Windows hasn't done anything new. It hasn't mounted that drive. So I cannot access the files yet. That's fundamentally the problem. And like I said, in Mac OS, it's not nearly as big a problem, but in Windows, it, it, it is. So I'm gonna use this tool here. So it, Pretty simple to use. You can see that it's called disk one. So you know, if, and you can see the partitions. If you wanted to be, um, you know, it, I'm only I only want to access one partition here. So if I had a drive with a bunch of partitions on it, it might be a little bit more complicated. But for me, just to get to the one partition, I'm going to load file system from device. I'm going to select auto detect. It does it really slickly. It'll, it'll go and find the HFS partition, which is what Mac OS's file system is called. It'll go find that quite easily. Um, but, like I said, if you had more than one partition, you could go to hard disk one, find the partition you wanted. If you had more than one that had data on it, um, you know. So, there's other ways to do it. But I usually use this auto detect feature. It almost always picks the picks the right partition out, and you can see here that it's uh, now Windows again. It doesn't do anything for Windows. It doesn't know it was, Windows still doesn't know what's going on. I haven't mounted the drive officially in the Windows environment. Um, you could if you if you wanted to, but for me, um, you can see that this is obviously a Unix file system. It's not Windows, so I'd have to go into Users, drill down to where the documents are to find the document I wanted. When I found the document or file or whatever I wanted, I just highlight it, I click extract, uh, pick out where I want to extract it to, um, and, you know, voila, there you go. So, it, uh, yeah, it works quite slick, and that's pretty much it. Um, let me know if you have any further questions about it. Um, I've used HFS Explorer in Windows 7, 8, and now 10. I've never really had much of a problem with it. Um, but it's a little bit of a pain. You have to kind of know where the files are. Um, you, if you, if you really wanted to transfer a lot of files over more than a few times a month sort of thing, you're probably going to want to purchase something like Mac Drive, which does a really nice job. But for me, HFS Explorer is good enough for now. All right. Thanks very much. And, uh, talk to you soon.